How's it going, Teal Boys? It is round one of the college football playoff. This year, we're doing an eight team. Uh, we face off against Oklahoma in the Cotton Bowl. And, and as we take a look at the matchup, that doesn't seem like it's going to go in our favor. I got to address one thing. A lot of you guys upset that somehow Georgia got snubbed from the playoff and that, a, what, what it was, a nine and four Alabama made it in. Let's go ahead and look. If uh, Georgia wanted to make it into the playoff, they should have won their conference. But they got beat down in their conference championship game. So while I agree that Alabama's record isn't deserving of a playoff spot, they did what they needed to do to make it. Uh, the, the bounds were set out from the get-go. You know, top or the, the power five conference champions. Uh, two at-larges in the highest ranked G5. And guess what? They're a Power 5 conference champion. So uh, disappointing season now for Georgia because they're playing in like the Citrus Bowl at 11-2. and two, But should have won your conference. It's as simple as that. So besides us in the Cotton Bowl, we do have Alabama and Michigan in the Sugar Bowl. We've got Penn State and Oregon in the Orange Bowl. And in the Rose Bowl, it's Cincinnati and Texas. Uh, that's our one versus eight seed game. Definitely expecting Texas to win that one, but you never know. We could have a little bit of a Cinderella story on our hands this season. <laughs> Surprisingly enough, somehow Cincinnati is favored to win in this game. Uh, I, uh, I'm having a hard time believing that. I think Texas makes it through easily. How about the other ones? Bama, Michigan. It's Bama favored to win. A lot of underdogs so far because we're also favored to win, so... Uh, Lee Corso just deciding that it's the, yeah, the underdogs that are winning the playoffs. Uh, Penn State, the lower ranked team, so technically the underdog, even though they are the higher overall of the two teams. But um, the, the lower seed expected to win right now in all four matchups. So we don't have any recruiting to do this week or really for the rest of the playoffs. So these should be... Uh, Episodes where we just get right into the game. 99 overall for Oklahoma with a 99 offense and a 99 defense. Oh, I don't like seeing that uh, at all. A little bit uncomfortable. Let's just wear the black pants today. Keep the white helmet and the white jersey. And Oklahoma. Um, I do like their their alternate with like the... I don't even know what, what they would call it. It's almost like, a, like an off-white. Close to a cream. But you know what? They have the playoff uh option so we should give them the playoff jerseys there's really not much of a change there but it is a change so the big 12 team that we're playing here looking pretty strong these guys are coming into this game with one of the best offenses in the country moving the ball no problem especially through the air uh and defensively they have done a very solid job um makes me a little bit worried Again, these are top players for next year. They've got a 97 overall left guard this year, and he's coming back. So that man is going to be a monster. Uh, CJ Beasley still injured. He's now questionable. So we might get to see him play at some point during these playoffs. Um, I might have to go in and edit some injury stuff in the, in the dynasty, just because technically there's a week going to be at least a week in between these games. Um, but I don't think the game will recognize that. So maybe we'll go through and we'll start clearing out some injuries as the playoffs progress for, uh, the teams that are involved. It's a big, big day here at AT&T Stadium as we will try to get through this quarterfinal match in the playoffs. Going with tails because it, well, it apparently always fails. <laughs> so it looks like we're going to start with the ball. Uh, thankfully no wind that we have to worry about today. And I am not confident about the way this game is going to go for us today. See what we can do. Marquise Jackson on the return. Gets some decent blocking. Gets an okay return out past the 30. We'll take that. So it's going to be uh, time for Grayson in the offense to try to come out onto the field and get something done the first time out. A two-yard carry for Braden Bennett opens up the game. Uh, hopefully we can run a little bit better than that. The hope is that we can score. I think our defense will get a stop here or there, but we need to be scoring points consistently this game. Braden Bennett, five yards on the reception that time. They brought a little blitz. Third and three here. I'm making a move that could be dangerous. Marquise Jackson coming in motion. 
for the triple option. We all know that this is very high likelihood of not going well, but Marquise Jackson gets the ball with a little bit of space. It's taken down after a nine yard pickup. And with the first down here, just outside midfield, we'll run it up the middle. Trying to get this running game going as much as we can early. Braden Bennett fumbles the ball. And Oklahoma recovers. Just took an absolute shot trying to hit the gap there. And yeah, that's a clear fumble. So Sooners with a chance to take an early lead. And that is potentially disastrous for us. I'm real worried about our secondary getting exposed this game. This is a very good passing team as I just totally failed the, uh, the assignments there on the option. We're going to try to bring a lot of blitzes, um, but I don't know if it's going to work all that well. And we need to make sure that we're tackling these guys as well. Need something to work a little bit better as this one goes out towards the edge. Durham Finch slows him down. I think that might have been Kale getting in there to finish off the tackle. It is third down for Oklahoma. And we're not going to bring the blitz quite yet on this game. I want to see what they're doing on their third downs. Plenty of time for the quarterback. He's flushed out of the pocket. And Spencer Rattler is sacked for a loss of six. And it's fourth and ten. So the defense holds as Sidney McRae gets there. Uh, surprised he didn't have somebody open. It'll be the punt formation taking the field for the Sooners. Uh, we'll expect either a shank on this one or a touchback. I don't see we're, us getting coffin cornered and we won't. Ball bounces into the end zone. So the offense survived the mistake. Defense bailed them out and now they get a chance to finally take the lead. When you start the game with the ball, you definitely want to be the first one to put up points on the board. We're going to go right back to Braden Bennett. Hopefully he doesn't fumble this time. Spin move doesn't find him anything. Good tackle holds him just to the line of scrimmage. And we're going to go with the bubble screen that we've been running quite a bit recently. To the running back, Braden Bennett just getting a couple of positive yards. Man, not enough. Third and eight. Don't like the way that this game has started for us. As we're throwing a dangerous one, Logan Malden had in his hands, but the safety knocks it free. And now we have to punt it away. Looks like they want to bring pressure and try to block this. So I'm going to try to cheese this punt past the return, man. Hopefully it hits the ground and skips past him. And maybe we can, yeah, back him up quite a bit. So a good punt. If we can tackle the man, my goodness. Three broken tackles and we got eight yards back. And we've got a man down injured. Hopefully it's nothing big. The last thing we need is to start losing personnel. First and 10 for Oklahoma. They'll step back to pass. What we expected more earlier in the season. And man, this man is beating us a couple times. Jalen Con Conyers, 22 yards on that one. Going to dial up the blitz on this first down. See if they go to the air. It will be a pass. Plenty of time as over the middle they find a man open for another first down. That time it's Nick Martin. So Rattler, perfect 3-3 three three to start off the day passing the ball. Uh, somebody's going to be open. Stokes needs to get the tackle, and man, he does do it, but just barely. And it's going to be Oklahoma scoring first, unless there's a turnover on this drive. First down, they will hand this one off out towards the edge, and the running game not quite there for Oklahoma yet. They only pick up a yard, so that allows me to know that they are... Oh, well, I thought they were going to go to the air. Instead, they go with another option and lose four yards. It's third and long. A great job on that one from Durham Finch. Forces this third down, and they're going to step back to pass, and Spencer finds a guy who breaks a tackle, but finally gets tackled at the line of scrimmage, and they're going to have to settle for a field goal. And Kale Mackey has had the wind knocked out of him, so he's going to be taking a little breather. As this field goal is up and good easily. Although I gotta say, it didn't seem like this kicker had the best distance based on that. And now if the offense can't get something going on this drive, I am very, very worried for the state of this game. Marquise Jackson on the return though. Who knows? Maybe we don't have to bring the offense out onto the field. If we can pick up the block there, that is such a crucial one. Marquise Jackson, if there's no penalties, has taken it to the house. 96 yards in the playoffs to give us the lead. That's the returner of the year getting it done. It's going to be 7-3 just like that. How about the downfield blocking on the return? Absolutely phenomenal.
Marquise is just pure lightning in a bottle. Has the chance to change the game at any moment, and he does it there. And now our defense gets a chance to come back out on the field and get another stop. They've done okay so far, let's be honest. Um, if they can continue to play this way, I think we have a good chance to win. Just going to be up to our offense. My hope is that uh, Oklahoma just continues to run the ball because that hasn't been the best uh, you know, option that they've had so far. Looking for the little bit of a blitz on second and six. Maybe another run on this second down. No, they'll go to the air and Spencer Rattler looks deep. It's Diggs dropping the interception. He jumped the route perfectly but can't hold on to the ball. So a big third and six for the team as they will step back to pass. And I left my man open, but I wasn't alone. Roger Reed getting beat by Curtis Hawley for 15 yards. And we are in the nickel 3-3-5 right now as we're bringing a bit of a blitz and it works to stop the run on first down. Trying to slow these guys down as much as we can. This looks like a screen out to the edge, but Radler just threw that one away. So third and long now. Really hoping that we can't get beat on uh, one of these third downs twice in a row. This is punting territory if we do manage to stop Oklahoma. But what will they do? They hand it off the last play of the first quarter. It's short of the line to gain. Fourth and five. And it looks like we're going to get the ball back with the lead as we head into the second quarter. The defense has been really, really good so far this game. I'm definitely happy with it. It's the offense that needs to figure some stuff out, though. On this fourth and five, they'll be punting the ball away. Maybe it's returnable for Marquise? Uh, nah, we should take the touch back there. Not worth the risk. Get the ball at the 20 and see if we can extend the lead. So first and 10, we will be handing this one off to Brayden Bennett up the middle. The blocking, honestly, pretty good for what we've seen so far in this game. And Brennan, uh, Bennett gets nine yards. And I'm going to trust in my running backs in this game, specifically in, in Braden, and let him just continue to carry the load and, you know, make up for the fumble earlier. Try the play action on first and 10. As outside the pocket, not confident. B was kind of open. I didn't mean to spin there with Grayson. We got eight yards. Could have made a throw, wasn't worth the risk. So second and two, we will just hand the ball off. Try to pick up this first down on the ground or at least get a little bit closer to it. We're just going to keep running. Four down territory, I'm going to say at this point, as Isaiah Connolly comes into the game. The new backup, really a third stringer, and he can't get it done. Tried to spin back inside. Nothing doing there, though. So here on fourth and one, we're going fullback dive. Needing to pick this up. JJ Barr, plenty of space. Gets it done. The drive stays alive for now. We were favored to win this one by Lee Corso, but I got to imagine most people realize that Oklahoma was the better team this season. My goodness, what a blitz. Shooting the gap, dropping us for a loss of four on that first down. Well, they're dialing up the pressure to stop the run, which is bad news as we will have to just really start passing the ball. I'm going to try to heave one deep. Oh, no, that ball's way underthrown, and it is intercepted. Grayson was nowhere near throwing the ball far enough on that one, and it's our second turnover of the half. Oklahoma with a chance to take the lead now. So the offense just can't seem to get out of its own way as they're going to run another option here. Charles Steele there for the tackle. Defense, surprisingly, the, the unit that's keeping us in this game right now. I am curious to see how long that lasts for. Second and 13, expecting a pass. No, they'll hand this one off. Kind of a counter. Plenty of space to work with for Marcus Major. And it's now third and four. And I'm going to sell out to protect against the pass on this one. Stay in the 3-3-5. Three, three, they do go out into the route. And oh, thought maybe we could have got Stokes Jr. there. But instead, it's a first down. And we're going to bring a little blitz on this one. First and 10, the corner blitz. Sees a couple of broken tackles and another first down as Oklahoma again in field goal range. Running game working very well for him on that one. This one, another run, another blitz, and finally a stop in the backfield. We needed that, but maybe a little too late. We'll go ahead and rush four this time out. Second and 12. Quarterback not really feeling the pressure as Rattler just finds Curtis Hawley over the middle. 
We're taking a big risk on this third and five. Gonna pressure everybody up and try to bring the safety blitz as Spencer Rattler has Mims wide open in the end zone and Oklahoma will take the three point lead. Two minutes left here in the second quarter. Well, the offense has been pretty bad so far this game. We need them to figure it out on this drive. Otherwise, we could very much be dead in the water on the game. Marquise with a bad return. Still not down, though. My goodness, really, really fighting. <laughs> Doesn't work out, but we'll see what the offense can do. Our biggest problem so far, and this is going to be that Grayson hasn't been a great passer so far, but he might not need to be if we can just throw it up for Marquise. And my goodness, that one was way overthrown. It would have been at best a 50-50 ball for us, but that was not a very good attempt. I guess that was either my guy's going to get to it or nobody is as I try to scramble and pick up just two yards and get the third and eight. And now we will desperately need to pick this one up. Look into the air. Literally nobody's open. Got to throw it away. Uh, the offense has been just straight abysmal today. So we will be forced to kick this one away. Again, I'm going to try to uh, cheese it a little bit. I don't think I put enough power on it. It will cheese past the return, man. No, he catches it on the bounce. So they've got field goal position potentially with a minute and a half and all their timeouts. Oh, that's rough. We might have been better off just throwing up a Hail Mary and hoping that either we catch it or they intercept it. But here we are. Quarterback looking to throw towards the end zone. Manny Stokes gets burned. And it's a touchdown on one play. Not sure how he's not able to jump up for that, but just a perfect pass from Spencer Rattler. And this game is starting to feel like it's out of reach now for us. So our only points of this entire game so far have come from a kick return for a touchdown. Hopefully we can get another one, but if the offense doesn't figure it out in a hurry, we're just absolutely screwed in this game. Just 43 total yards at this point for the offense. And I don't know, unless something changes soon, I don't see that stopping. That's like 25% of our yards right there on the pass to Dion Fountain. We do have all of our timeouts, plenty of time to work with, but we need to make sure that we are... Uh, picking up yards where we can get them outside the pocket. Grayson's going to get sacked. I got to take the first time out. Man, their defensive ends are quick. Let's throw up a four verts and see if somebody can get open. You never know. Maybe Marquise over the middle. He's going to hold on to that, but the clock's going to be moving on third and eight. So will anything be available to us? They're bringing a little bit of pressure outside the pocket. We're going to scramble for it. Grayson has the first down enough to stop the clock, and we'll keep this hurry up. First down, looking to pass. There's Logan Malden. He's not going to drop that. We're moving the ball finally. The big question is, is it going to be enough at this stage in the game? Oh, my gosh. I almost threw another pick. Well, we're going to pretend that that was intentional. And it was just a way for us to stop the clock. Oh, I don't like it at all. Um, let's go to the air on this second and ten. Guy I want to throw to is open, but I threw it too late and they pick it off. Are you kidding me? What an interception. Wow. This game's really, really getting away from us. We are in need of a miracle now. 37 seconds and three timeouts for Oklahoma. And I got to assume that they're going to score on this one. Look into the air, just throwing it away, thankfully. Got to find a turnover of our own somehow. I'm going to stick with the cover three for now. I'm going to try to use our defensive linemen. Sometimes we can get a little bit of extra pressure on the quarterback, so we'll hope for that as Sidney McRae. No, can't get off our blocks, and it's all too easy to catch there for the first down. Oh, 28 seconds now. There's some pressure on the quarterback, but look it. Wide open on the out route to Curtis Hawley. Coverage just is not there today. So if we could slow these plays down a little bit, maybe we would have a chance, but it doesn't seem like that's the case. As, man, they're holding on to everything and they're moving the ball every play. Two timeouts in 20 seconds should be enough to get into field goal range. Going to try to continue to use her McRae here because I feel like we've been getting some decent pressure, but it's just not enough. Third and two and they take their second timeout. I would be a little bit surprised if they didn't pass the ball here. So we're going to sell out to stop the pass. And it will be them stepping back to pass. 
but it's a man wide open for sure in a field goal range maybe a whole lot more nine seconds we gotta hope that they just screw up the clock management at this point is they're about to go up what 13 points we need a strip sack that's like the only thing that can save us from falling even more pressure gets there force him to throw it away five seconds i think they take the field goal so it is field goal formation out it's going to be 20 to 7 unless they miss this uh, maybe a chance for Marquise to return one and make it just a six point game at the half but i'm not feeling too optimistic there we need a good return for a touchdown to have any chance to stay in this game oklahoma gets the ball to start the third quarter which is just such a disaster and there's no blocking for us oh what an awful awful first half we're going onside kicks for the rest of this game any chance we can which who knows it might just be this one attempt defense has honestly played pretty well but three turnovers in a two possession game is really really brutal you never know maybe we recover one of these and or two of these and our bacon is completely saved that one <gasps> is recovered <laughs> jt killen got there the backup linebacker well that's unexpected unfortunately now we have to rely on the offense to do what they have not been able to do all game long but a chance a chance now for the offense Braden bennett gets four yards on first down he carries for only 19 yards for Braden bennett as we'll look to pass to him through the air no b was open but we're gonna scramble and just slide down for the first at this point in the game the fewer passes we have to make the better so we'll avoid that as much as we can trying the read option on this first down sees Braden just getting two yards we'll go to the air here on second and eight see what's available Logan Malden might have been open Braden Bennett wow somehow got the catch we gotta go hurry up before they look at that though it's third and four here in four down territory and we're gonna pass Tyson Mobley with potentially the one-on-one -on -one or no bed good he can't come down with a great defense there so fourth and four let's go for it trying to throw the timer out there's bed good he's gonna hold on to that one I don't like that we're having to convert on fourth downs but we are uh two for two now maybe it's two for three all I know is we've done it twice which is great news and got an audible away from this bubble screen doesn't seem like it's gonna work and now that we have Bennett back in the formation, let's run the ball. See what we can get done as Bennett just, just is getting no help from the line today. It's second and 11 now as we will just continue to hope that something good happens. B's open. Bed good. Oh my gosh. How does he not get to that ball? It's third and long. I understand that Grayson was throwing on the run, but that one should have easily been catchable and so now we have to really hope third and 11 that Brayden Bennett can come down with that and get the first and goal inside the five I thought that was an interception when I threw it instead it's 32 yards to the good and from two yards out it's time to attempt the first fullback dive here trying to find the offense's first points of the game and they do it JJ Barr into the end zone and just like that it's a six point game we're gonna go with another onside kick though you never know two in a row could be possible a little bit too much power on it but okay so they do get it but this works out in our favor we touched it first and then this game an illegal touching on an onside kick will give them just the ball at like the 35 so we don't get hurt too badly that was best case scenario on that uh we don't get the ball but they don't get the great field position and we're gonna bring the safety blitz on this first down over the middle martin wide open kale Mackey just got burned on the slant route for 18 yards i'm just so worried about the run that i'm bringing a ton of pressure but it's not working all the time this time they go to the air and just over the middle holly wide open and he's got 21 more so they are moving with no problems and we'll hope that we don't get dusted on this one as there's got to be somebody open but wow he only got two yards bailed out because he was wide open just gonna try a bunch of zone blitzes here i think second and eight they are gonna run the ball eventually it's not on this play this one's a little bit of a screen and it's not enough for the first down yet third and two and i'm bringing the house on this one 
Calling it a run, it's not. Hopefully they don't get burned. Spencer Rattler gets sacked. It's a loss of four and will hold them to a field goal. Absolutely phenomenal job as we brought a ton of pressure on that play. This is likely to be a completed or kick, and it is. Man, he tried to push it, but um, we're not out of this yet. Only a nine-point game for us. So the offense will get the chance to make it two, one potentially, if we go for two. Or maybe Marquise Jackson can tell the offense that they don't have to come out onto the field at all. The diving tackle saves it from being his second return for a touchdown, but it gives the offense great field position. And this is a phenomenal chance now for the offense to right the ship on the game. They haven't done great. Braden Bennett just got obliterated, but he got six yards in the process. And we'll go to our bubble screen on second and four. This could be wide open if we get the pass out. If there's any blocking, Braden spin move avoids the first guy. Enough for the first down. We'll take that. And it is to the short side of the field, but we're going to try the jet sweep to Marquise Jackson and see if anything's doing. And hey, we'll take that six yards on a wide receiver run is always going to work for us. From the 25-yard line, we will hand the ball off up the middle. And I'm a little bit worried about how much clock is left. Under two minutes left in the third quarter. We will go to the air on this third and two. This is four down territory. As far as I'm concerned, right bumper is open. It's Braden Bennett, and he actually went backwards to catch that. Yeah, freaking doofus. You got to drop it. It's fourth and five now, and that's going to make this fourth down conversion just that much harder. They are bringing some pressure, trying to throw it. We find bad good for the first and goal. We are so lucky converting these. As I think they were bringing a little bit of pressure. We're going to go from the hurry up to try to catch them. A little bit off guard on first and goal. Running up the middle, Braden. Decent two-yard pickup. Not the best, but we'll take it. And we're going to go to the Wildcats on this second and goal to run a read option. This play has worked pretty well for us in the past. Braden Bennett keeping the ball. Just can't avoid the safety. Gets back to the line of scrimmage, and now it's third down. So we have to pick up eight yards on what will be the final play of the third quarter. And DJ Johnson wide open immediately. We find him early. We get the ball to him. And with one second left in the third quarter, it's a three-point game as it stands. But we're going to go for two. We're going to take a big risk here not throwing the ball. And we'll go for the triple option. Wide receiver coming in motion. And we do have to hand it off. And that was just, oh, man. Our offensive line has been bad. I needed that one to be out towards the edge. Three-point game. And we are to finish off this third quarter going for another onside kick. I like the power on it. The bounce wasn't great, though, and it is fielded by Oklahoma. They fumble the ball, and Dion Fountain picks it up. Are you kidding me? Oh, my goodness. So unless they overturn this to, to end the third quarter, we'll go into the fourth down three with the ball. What an absolute f turn of events on the play. That looks like a clean fumble from the replay, and we could still win this game. Just f absolutely stunning as we're going to give the ball to Marquis on another jet sweep to start the fourth quarter here. Blocking is nowhere to be found, and it's a loss of a yard. We don't like to see that. Let's go to the air on second 11, looking for Braden Bennett. And he's going to be wide open. Is it enough for the first down? No, but it does give us a third and three at about midfield. So again, four down territory. I don't know if I would settle for a field goal, but we would have to think about it. So long as we could get in a field goal range. Braden getting tackled from behind, but does enough to get the first down and keep this drive going for now. And we finally got that turnover that we needed with the, uh, the fumble on the onside kick. Real happy about that one as Braden again, man, their running is or their their run defense is really smothering us. They're daring us to pass against them, knowing that we've already turned the ball over twice. So I'm not a fan of having to deal with that. Let's throw the safe one to Dion Fountain, but he's late making the throw, so he can't hold on through the contact, and it's third and long again. 50% on the day for our third down conversions as we'll step back to pass and Tyson Mobley. Comes down with that one through the contact. Not at all how I expected the play to go. But I cannot be upset with the result. 
We stay alive on the drive and we're nearing field goal range. Down three. Brayden Bennett, a great carry. And now we are in field goal range with another first down just outside the red zone. What a play that was. Let's go back to the bubble screen. I've been liking it so far in this game. I like it for at least two yards on this one, so long as it's not picked off. Maybe lucky that one was incomplete. Bennett got smothered on that one. Honestly, happy that one was just dropped and not picked off or anything. Second and ten, trying to give it to him again, and ah, maybe we're asking too much of him. Well, third and 11. If we don't pick up a lot here, we're going to kick the field goal. We will look to the air, and unfortunately, Braden Bennett, who we're looking for over the middle. Oh my gosh, I almost threw another pick. Thank goodness he dropped that. That would have been so disastrous. It's fourth down, and we have to kick the 39-yarder. Got to tie this game up. Plenty of time left. Uh, I think we could probably hit from 45 based on that one. But 23 all, 345 left. And now we don't need to go with the onside kick. We can just hope that the defense has been off the field long enough in the second half that they are very well rested. And that they can get things done. Imagine another turnover. I would love it. As there's a flag. I think this might go against Oklahoma, which would be phenomenal. It is a clipping, so that's going to back them up even more. Where to? The 13-yard line. I love it. 340 on the clock in this tie game. We'll bring the blitz on first down. They're going to step back to pass, and it's a man open. And he breaks a tackle, but eventually, thankfully, steps out of bounds, only getting five. And I'm going to bring an even bigger blitz this time. Hopefully doesn't bite us too much. Second and five. Man in motion. They step back to pass, but so Rattler just tried to run. I don't know if that was designed or not, but he lost three, and it's third and long. We have stopped these downs before in this game. Can we do it on this one? Third and eight, they look to pass over the middle. They have to have a guy. I left the running back wide open. Stokes can't get the tackle. Are you kidding me, Manny? How could you do that? Oh, you gotta be kidding me, Manny Stokes. Can't get the open field tackle. Which gives them a new set of downs. Kill Mackey, great blitz. Drops him for a loss of four, but we should have the ball. No excuse for that missed tackle as they will step back to pass on this one not bringing the pressure don't want to get burned and Rattler gets sacked third and 22 if we don't stop this we don't deserve to stop it Killen is still in which makes me a little bit worried that Mackey is uh, a bit of an injury but on third down they'll step back looking to throw quarterback plenty of time has a man but he gets out of bounds too early and it's fourth and seven we're gonna get the ball back with two minutes left to try and win this game so the clock will be moving inside two minutes to play as this could be and hopefully will be the final drive of the game as Marquise back to return lightning in a bottle he's already opened this game up for us once they're burning clock I'm gonna let him uh I I want to just get in a field goal range and kick a field goal if we can and this should be a returnable punt. It is. Oh my gosh, look at plenty of space in front of him. Marquise muffs the punt though. And then gets going and gets a great return. Marquise still on his feet across the 40 yard line. A minute and 32. Not very far for us to go to get inside field goal range now. So let's just try to get ourselves to that 45 yard range first and then we'll look at doing some other stuff as Isaiah Conley loses two yards and has the clock moving I really don't want to have to pass at all but they're kind of forcing our hand here as I'm going to get outside the pocket and scramble for this picking up yards Grayson McCall fumbles the ball and now it's Oklahoma with the chance to win it with a minute left in the game was he actually down yeah that's a clean fumble oh I tried to slide but he just got hit before I could hit the button. That right there, I think, might be worst case scenario for us as we will hope to create another turnover of our own or at least slow them down or stop them here. Just got to hope we don't give up anything big. Maybe we get a sack at some point. Feels like this could go to overtime. I just do not want to give up a field goal. They might be burning the clock here. Maybe Oklahoma is worried. That they can't get it done, this seems like a, a foolish mistake. And yeah, they're going to get hit with a false start. What are they doing? 
So second and 13, 35 seconds. We went from surely winning to now it feels like they're going to do it. And you know, what? I'm taking timeouts. It's third and 17, 31 seconds. A stop here. And again, we could have a chance to survive in this game. They will step back to pass, trying to prevent anything deep from happening. Still looking, throwing it up. Sadipo gets the stop. It's incomplete. We get to save the timeout. 23 seconds now. My goodness, that was one of those terrifying ones where you just expect them to find somebody open eventually. Marquise, a chance to win the game for us with a, a good return or maybe even a touchdown running for the edge, trying to get something getting out of bounds at about midfield. 13 seconds now. So with 13 seconds, what can we get done? Marquise is who I'm looking for. You already know it. Throwing it deep, giving him the 50-50, and it's incomplete. Man, he just hasn't been able to get past his guys easily enough in this game. Well, let's throw up the Hail Mary. Likely the final play of the game. No reason. No oh my gosh, that's so underthrown. Ball's incomplete. One second left. We get one more chance to do something here. And I don't think this is going to work, but we're going to try it anyways. The fake fly, flea flicker for the memes. Because I don't think a Hail Mary is going to work any better. So we might as well give it a shot. Passes up. Bedgood. <laughs> Did he come down with that? Was that picked off? I don't know. End of regulation. It's tied up and we're headed to overtime. Chances to win it, but we couldn't do it. We got to choose the toss again. Tails can't fail us twice in a row or it can. So we have to start on offense, which is scary well we no longer have to worry about the clock in this one as we will just try to get the offense moving second and nine only a gain of one for conley there and let's go to the air and see what we can do on this one outside the pocket conley wide open broke a tackle still on his feet man if he doesn't step out of bounds there's even more but he does get us the first down and i'm gonna risk losing the game for us here Motion, triple option. You guys already know this is a dangerous for one for us to run. I'm just going to keep it with Grayson no matter what here and slide down. Get the six yards. Get inside the 10. And let's go up the middle on second and 10. Hopefully Conley can get it done. Uh, does that mean Beasley's just super tired or is he injured? Third and three, only a yard on that play. I've come in here to check to see what happened to Braden Bennett, but we're going to bring CJ Beasley in for this uh he's questionable he is a little bit injured but we need the uh the extra production that our starting running back could give us and the first play that we bring him in we're going to go no he's not in on this play well we're gonna go with this uh wildcat read option again beasley getting the ball and he's gonna get tackled it's fourth and seven. Oh, i think i i don't know i feel like we have to go for this i really hope this decision doesn't lose us the game but I'm stepping back to pass. Over the middle. Tyson Mobley. It's deflected. Gosh dang it. We're going to lose in the first round of the playoffs. Oh, that's frustrating. Good play. Well, all they need to do at this point is just come out and uh, kick the field goal. Because they have already won this one. And they're just going to be getting closer. Don't really have a hope to win it at this point. Other than just trying to force a turnover. So that's what we're going to do. We're trying to bring the big hits. And it's not going to work. First and goal for Oklahoma. Such a disappointing way to finish this one off as they will, I guess, look for the touchdown for a more surefire way. And there it is. Gosh dang it. What a waste of time to get all that work for the comeback and then just to lose it like that in overtime. Should have gone for the field goal, but... Hindsight's 2020, and I just didn't trust that the defense would be able to hold these guys out of the end zone from such a close distance. Try to give ourselves a better chance at the win. It's a classic game, but I'm not happy about it. Tough way to end the season. As uh, just couldn't start hot early enough. Took too long for the offense to get going. And we just weren't able to run the ball there in overtime, so rough what a tough way to end this season four turnovers four turnovers in a game that went into overtime you oh my gosh you give us one of those back that fumble by grayson on the scramble and we win the game in regulation just difficult so so hard to deal with we held them to 10 rushing yards they passed for 292 on us though 
And man, it just wasn't enough at the end of the day. So, so frustrating. Tried to get it there, but we just couldn't quite do it. Marquise is our offensive player of the game. Shelton's our defensive, but such a tough way in Grayson's final game with the team. I really thought we were going to win this one, but the 99 overall Oklahoma Sooners prevail and they'll be headed towards the semifinals. So let's sim through the rest of these quarterfinal matchups to see who's playing what. Uh, Alabama in Michigan. It looked like Bama won it and they did so. You can say they don't belong in the playoffs, but they belong more so than Michigan at this point as they will advance to the semifinal. How about between Penn State and Oregon? It's, ooh, it doesn't show us. It is the Ducks winning it 29 to 20. Pretty close game there. Comes down to a big fourth quarter, really, to secure that win for the Ducks. They'll be moving on. And our last one, the Rose Bowl between Cincinnati and Texas. Can the G5 Cinderella team make it through? I don't think they did. No, not even close. 45 to 14. Uh... I mean, they scored first. They had the lead at one point, but once Texas scored, it was uh, it was all downhill from there for the Bearcats. So with uh, all those games being played, we'll go ahead and save. I really wish that I could just uh, maybe hit Alt F4 and, and replay our game, but no saves coming happening here. So let's go ahead and edit the playoff. We're going into step two. And we will load this up and just a, a little bit disappointing. I really did think we were going to win that. I was so nervous going for it on that fourth down. Just a shame. So there we see it. It's got it all right. Uh, Oklahoma versus Alabama and Texas versus Oregon. That'll be the Peach Bowl and the Fiesta Bowl. So we'll go ahead and save that. And we can sim through these games as well. We'll wait for the uh, for the championship game for next episode, but we can see who's going to make it through the semifinals between Oregon and Texas. I think that looked like Texas winning, and it is. It's a close one, 17 to 10, with a big third quarter for the Longhorns to give them the lead, and uh, Ducks couldn't respond. Now our other matchup, Alabama, Oklahoma. Can Bama do it? It looked like it's Oklahoma. Hey, if we're going to lose to a team, they better be the team that wins it all. Oklahoma wins it 38 to 20. Uh, oh my gosh, a 21 point fourth quarter really seals the deal there. That's a lot of touchdowns there. Uh, Bama scoring some pity points in the last minute and a half, but the Sooners get it done. So we can go ahead and do our step three now. And we'll get our uh, our championship game set up. It's going to be between Texas and Oklahoma. So uh, in all Big 12 uh, national championship game, going to be played in Tampa at Raymond James Stadium. You know, it's really, really tempting to set it somewhere in Texas. We could go and set it in Dallas at AT&T Stadium, or we could send it to Houston but I think that we're going to keep it how it should be uh, with the Raymond James in Tampa there. And, uh, you know, interesting first time around with the playoffs. We end up with the one seed playing the three seed. Only one lower seeded team ends up making it through the first round. And that being Alabama. We were close in ours. Uh, Penn State was close in theirs. But I guess the, the seeds made sense in the end. So we'll go ahead and save this one up. And we can uh, look forward to <laughs> seeing who wins this. I got to hope it's Oklahoma. Um, just because it'll make it look better for us that we lost to the team that ran through the rest of the bracket and won the playoff. Um, if you're a fan of the Big 12, you might enjoy this quite a bit. Uh, big, big rivalry game for the national championship. Unfortunately, my bad decision making on fourth and seven in overtime means that we aren't going to be a part of that. And so we are going to have to call that a day, unfortunately. Next episode, we'll go ahead and see who wins the national championship. And then we will go through the offseason 
Um, and I'm a very worried about our recruiting. Hopefully we have some players that will stick around if, you know, if anybody tries to leave early and hopefully our red shirts will come in handy, but it's going to be sad to say goodbye to Grayson. We will welcome in the new quarterback right on Randell though. Um, hopefully uh, a new era means that we can get to new heights. I'm not sure. Very, very curious to see how it goes and at this point i need to remind you guys that if you want to rename one of the uh recruits in this incoming class one of the only three at this point uh you know after yourself after some someone else uh maybe it's the name that you always use when you do a, a road to glory or something uh channel members at tier two and higher have that ability so be looking for a community post about that Kind of coming up in the next couple of days. But as far as this episode is concerned, that's going to have to be it. So if you enjoyed it, please feel free to like. It helps out the uh, the videos and the channel tremendously when you guys like the videos a lot. Um, and if you want to be, you know, notified when new videos are posted, please feel free to subscribe. While you're down there doing those two things, you can head to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster as well as links to my twitter and our community discord and of course there's links to the college football revamped mod as well if you're trying to get it for yourself but that being said thank you guys so much for watching my name is goonmaster you guys are the teal boys wherever you are have a good night or have a good morning we'll see you later adios